Hello friends, the National Library of Ayurveda Medicine is pleased to present a new episode on Ayurveda. The present release is part of a video lecture series prepared for the education of Ayurveda literature in accordance with the academic curriculum of Ayurveda studies in India. My name is Dr. Sumit Kesarkar and I will be your host throughout this video which is a continuation of the explanation of Vata Dosha and describes its five subtypes and their interrelationships. Vata Dosha carries out its various functions through its subtypes. We have already looked at the subtle relation of Vata Dosha and its subtypes which are co-related to humors in modern terms. Vata Dosha is the all-governing force in the cosmos and humans are one part of its manifestation. In humans, Vata Dosha sustains the body along with the other two doshas, Kapha and Pitta. However, Vata Dosha functions in the body are subject to malfunctions which ultimately proves to be a contributing factor to the physical death of the body. The functions of Vata are vivid as described earlier and are more specifically carried out or identified by its subtypes. Vata has five subtypes. They are Pranavayu, Udanavayu, Samanavayu, Vyanavayu and Apanavayu. These are the Sanskrit names of the five types of Vata. There are no equivalent terms in English. They are formed by adding various prefixes to the root an, which means to breathe or to energize. They are the most important of these groups of five, as vata is the most important of the dosha. They are called vayus, which also means winds. They show the different kinds of movement of the life force. Let us have a brief look at each of the vayus. Pranavayu Prana means the forward or primary air or nervous force. The prefix pra means forward, towards or prior and relates to absorption. Ashtang Rudai gives description of Pranavayu as Pranadi Bheda Panchatma Vayu Pranotra Murdaga Ura Kantasharu Buddhi Rudai Indriya Chitta Druka Stevan Shavutu Udgarani Shwasa Anna Praveshakrut. Pranavayu is located in the brain, nose and throat. Pranavayu functions in the head, neck and chest region and the direction of its action is from the atmosphere to the inside of the body. It carries out the functions of the sensory organs in the head and acts as a receptor of all external stimuli. Pervading the head and centered in the brain, prana moves downward to the chest and throat. It governs inspiration which is inhaling during breathing which helps in purifying the blood taking in of food and water, as well as sneezing, spitting and belching. It governs the intake of impressions through the five senses of touch, smell, sound, taste and vision, interpreting these impressions and coordinating reactions to them, mental activities and grasping of knowledge. Pranavayu also keeps the consciousness intact. On an inner level, it governs the mind, heart and consciousness and gives them energy coordination and adaptability. It is a portion of the cosmic life energy and directs all the other vatas in the body. It determines an inspiration or positive spirit in life and connects us with the inner self or pure consciousness. It should be noted that the term prana is also used in a broader sense to indicate vata in general as all vatas derive from it. Prana has mainly an inward movement. When prana is sufficient, no disease can affect us. All diseases involve some impairment of prana and can be treated with methods like pranayama, breathing exercise or aromatherapy which help balance it as the course will outline. Udanavayu Udana means the upward moving air or nervous force. The prefix ud means upwards. Ashtangrudai gives description of Udanavayu as Urasthanam Udanasya Nasa Nabi Gala Sancharit Vaka Pravrutti Prayatna Urja Bala Varanasmruti Kriya. Udanvayu is located in the chest and throat, nose, umbilical region, and throat. Udanvayu acts in the opposite direction of Pranvayu. It acts in an upward and outward direction. It governs exhalation and orientation of speech, both of which occur through the outgoing breath. It allows us to express ourselves through talking, singing, whistling, 
to show our emotions through laughter or tears, and to perform actions such as sneezing and blowing. Production of energy and power in the body are linked with Udan Vayu. It is mainly related with the regulation of respiration. On an inner level, Udana is responsible for memory, strength, will and effort. Udana has mainly an upward movement. It brings the air up and out in exhalation. It brings the energy up in our strivings in life. It causes our minds and spirits to ascend. It gives us higher values and deeper powers of discrimination. At death, it rises up from the body and directs us towards various subtle worlds according to the power of our will and karma that move through it. When fully developed, it gives us the power to transcend the outer world and afford various psychic powers. The practice of yoga is involved mainly with developing udana through which the kundalini arises. Samanvayu Samana means the equalizing air. Sama means balancing. Ashtang Rudai gives description of Saman Vayu as Samanu Agni Samipasta Koshtu Charita Sarvataha Annam Gruhati Pachati Vivechayati Muyati. Saman Vayu is located in gastrointestinal tract. It is present in the area of the abdomen where digestion takes place. It is centered in the small intestine. It is the nervous force behind the digestive system. Its main function is to ignite the digestive fire and activate the process of digestion by creating peristalsis in intestinal movements. It also helps in the separation and absorption of digested food and carries excretory waste to the large intestine. When impaired, it causes a lack of appetite or nervous indigestion. It functions in all organs to aid in absorption and in this regard also works in the lungs to help with the absorption of air. Samana mainly has an equalizing or balancing action and a contracting movement. It balances the higher and lower portions of the body and their respective energies. It balances the inner and outer and the upper and lower parts of the body in process of digestion. As it aids in assimilation and increase of energy, it has some ascending action. Vyanavayu Vyana means the diffusive or pervasive air. V is a prefix meaning apart or to separate. Ashtang Rudai gives description of Vyanavayu as Vyano Rudhisthitaha Krutsan Deha Charo Maha Javaha Katyab Ukshepa Arnotakshep Nimesha Unmesha Parnadikaha Parya Sarva Kriyatsmina Pratibada Sharirina Vyanavayu is located in the entire body and specifically the heart. Vyana has mainly an outward and expanding movement. Vyanavayu is centered in the heart and distributed throughout the entire body. It governs the circulatory system, maintaining the rhythm of the heartbeats dilatation and constriction of vessels, the movements of the joints and muscles, and the discharge of impulses and secretion within this system. It performs the functions of nerve impulse conduction and is responsible for the perception of touch by means of skin. It is the initiator of all actions and movements everywhere in the body including mental activities. When it is impaired, we suffer from lack of coordination and difficulty in movement. When it is strong, we have good powers of movement and physical articulation. Apanavayu Apana means the downward moving air or the air that moves away. Ashtang Rudai gives description of Apanavayu as Apano Apanagaha Shroni Basti Medro Rugacharaha Shukra Artav Shakrun Mutra Garba Nishkraman Kriya Apanavayu is located in the pelvis, urinary tract and the reproductive system. Apana acts in a downward direction. Apanavayu is the primary vayu present at the main seat of vata in the pakwasha. It governs all downward moving impulses of elimination, urination, menstruation, part urination and sex. It governs the absorption of water which occurs in the large intestine and gives us the power to take in full nourishment from a food. It activates and mobilizes sperm, enables performance of sexual activities and is central to ovulation, menstruation and the process of childbirth. 
It aids in the nourishment of the fetus and supports the immune system or our ability to eliminate or ward off toxins. Apana supports and controls all the other forms of vata because it rules the large intestine, vata's main site of accumulation. Rearrangements of apana are the basis of most vata disorders. As a downward moving force, when aggravated, it causes an increase of waste materials and toxins. Its impairment manifests as difficulty or abnormality in these discharges, for example, both constipation and diarrhea. The treatment of apana is the first consideration in the treatment of vata. This allows prana and udana and the other vayus to return to their normal functioning by reducing the restraining action of apana. As vata disorders are the basis of most diseases and as they usually accompany those of the other two doshas, we must always consider normalizing apana in the treatment of any disease. Summary of the five pranas Pranavayu has an inward and downward movement. Its site of action is the head. It governs the intake of energy via food, drink, breath, impressions, emotions, thoughts and consciousness. It resides in the head and moves inward and downwards allowing for the reception of all energy sources. The breath is the key action for prana. In breathing, we not only take in energy from the air, we can also connect with subtle sources of energy through the consciousness. Udanavayu has an upward movement. Its sites of action are the nose, throat, chest and umbilicus. It governs the output of energy via our expression through speech, physical effort, emotional enthusiasm and mental judgment. It is responsible for a creative use of energy. It is the ultimate result of nutrition, the positive energy created through it. Samana has an inward movement towards the deeper tissues. Its sites are the gastrointestinal tract, especially the small intestine. It governs the absorption of energy via the digestive and other systems. Vyana has an outward direction towards the periphery. Its site is the entire body, especially the heart. It governs the circulation of energy via the circulatory system, but also through the breath, senses, emotions, thoughts and consciousness. It transports the absorbed prana to the places where it can work and express itself. Apana has a downward and outward movement. Its sides are the pelvis, urinary tract and reproductive system. It governs the elimination of waste energy via all energy sources. All five vayus are more complex than their simple physical presentation. Keeping all five vayus in balance and in proper functioning on all levels of our being is the key to real health. I hope this video was informative and made the subject clear. Comments and feedback are highly appreciated and you can leave them by visiting the National Library's website at www.nlam.in or likewise by writing to me at vdsumit at gmail.com. Thank you for watching.